every video, I start off by being super excited, super nervous, super scared, super happy. I'm nervous about the pattern and I'm nervous about the fabric. I'm surprised I'm even doing this because I've only started in June of last year. It hasn't even been a year yet. But I thought this week, you know what? Why not up my sewing anxiety and try to make a top based off only a picture? I was scrolling online last week and you know what? Targeted marketing at its best. They hit me with this. It is my dream blouse that I didn't even know I needed and I just want to be wearing it right now. It is so beautiful. I love the cape, the bow, the open sleeves. It's just flowy. It's exactly my style. It's kind of fantasy. It's kind of history bounding. It's just beautiful. So I need it. But I've been moving away from fast fashion and you know what? I don't know a thing about this company. They might be really great. They might be a little scammy. I actually have no idea. I didn't go further than looking at the picture. I don't know how much this blouse is. I know nothing about the company. So if it's a good company, go check it out. If you want the blouse, it's up there right now. Let me know if you actually buy it down below if they're good or not. But I think I can make it myself and I think I can make it from thrifted material and I'm going to give it a shot today. I have to admit, I actually haven't gone into detail about how I made my pattern, only because I don't know if this is gonna turn out and I really don't wanna waste everyone's time of how I made the pattern if it doesn't work out. I'd rather try it again, do a fail video, and then once I finally get it right, show you how I make the pattern. So, if it's a nice thumbnail of me wearing the shirt in a nice background and it looks good, I will show you in the next few weeks how to make this because my initial idea was to make this a dress, but I found the prettiest material ever and there's only enough for a top. So this week I'm gonna do the top as a mock-up basically and I'm using fabric I love. I don't know why I'm not doing a mock-up. Welcome to my channel. I don't do mock-ups. I don't know why I don't do mock-ups because apparently I like to look like this. If it's a thumbnail of me crying into a bunch of floral fabric scraps, you know it didn't turn out, so just wait for the video in a couple weeks and I will show you how I made the pattern. What I can tell you is the two patterns I did use to kind of pattern hack Frankenstein to make this similar looking blouse if it turned out. Last week I used McCall 7870 for my springtime prairie dress. I really like the bow detail at the top and I like the yoke. Everything else doesn't really go with what the pattern is, but I think I can use those details making my own. I also used Vogue 8108 in my New Year's Eve dress that I made a few months back. If you ever find this pattern, buy it. It's so easy, it's so good. The dress turned out really, really great. I love it. So I really recommend this pattern. But for this one, I really like the sleeves because it didn't have much of a puff. And again, I like the details of the top. So I might be trying to incorporate this in here, but I'm definitely going to use this, I think, for the sleeves. I've already made all of my pattern pieces and I actually cut out all my pieces last night because I was so terrified and I really wanted to get it done. So basically right now I'm just stalling. So I'm gonna show you the fabric, I'm gonna show you me cutting it up and then we're gonna start piecing it together. <laughs> I started by serging the outside edges of both of my sleeves because these aren't going to be sewn to anything. They're just going to be flipped under and sewn down. And then I've also done the facing for my front bodice. I showed this in my last dress video, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but basically it's just pinned right sides together. I did a V stitch here, and then I'm gonna be cutting right down the middle and then flipping this all inside. spun in and I've done a basting stitch all around the top on both sides. I'm going to attach the sleeves. I'm going to start with just one and I think what I have to do is attach kind of sandwich the sleeve in the middle of the front and the back with the sleeve 
right side facing up and the back right side facing down. And this is the front side of the sleeve also facing up. So I'm going to match it all along the neck edge and then put the back right side facing down and also match it with the top of the sleeve. So now I'm going to go and do the stitch all along this top shoulder. So somehow these are all put together. Here we go this way. Now what I have to do, I have to decide how I want to attach the back part of the sleeve to the back piece. So I forgot to mention I needed to put in an e-stitch at the top just because obviously the sleeve is a little bit bigger than the armhole because it does have a little bit of a gather. So I put that in. The other thing I forgot to do was to hem the back part of the sleeve because if I attach it before it's hemmed it's just going to be really weird to do. So I've done that to this sleeve but I'm definitely going to do it before I attach everything for the next sleeve. So right now both right sides are facing up. So I think if I flip this, I'll be able to gather everything here. I'm like shaking pinning right now because I am so <laughs> terrified I'm going to screw this up. Uh, why do I do this to myself? So it has a bit of a gather, but I actually don't hate that. I have to grade the seams because it's a little heavy, obviously, where all of the seams are matching up. Where is the seam line? Oh, there we go. It's a little bit, tugs a little bit. Is that going to bug me? Probably. Holy, this is confusing. Where does, okay. I need an assistant. Farley, come help me. Maybe I should go press it first and then see if there's a problem. better that clapper it works oh my gosh it's working okay I can't get too excited because I still have to do the other sleeve <laughs> and I have to remember what I did what did I do all right okay so first I have to hem the back sleeve I've stitched it over pressed it down so that side is basically hemmed in place now. So I started with that the last time and I think I did that after. So I need to do that first before doing the sandwich. goes up here and line that up as well. So I'll go stitch this. So the shoulder is in. Now I just have to pin the arm into the arm hole thing. <laughs> Almost crushed my teacup. Oh my gosh, this thing is so confusing to put on. I haven't pressed it. I think it looks the same. What do you think? Go stitch this because it's just basted in. And then I'm done. I wish. Okay, so yes, next. 
bring the light back. Stitch this on, make sure it's in place. Do you mind? I have to hem this side of the capelet and sleeve. So I didn't do it because obviously I have to do the collar soon. So I want to do that before I put the collar in place. So I'm just going to do, it's already all serge. So I'm just going to flip it over once and do maybe a quarter inch or so all the way around the edges, press it all super flat, use the clapper to make sure it's really flat. And then I'm going to just baste all of this together before I put it on the collar. So for the collar, basically all I have to do, make the tie, and then attach it. And then I have to put on the cuffs, which are going to be so easy because it's actually flat. So I'm not putting them in, in the round. I'm just putting them on on the outside flat. And I've made enough room that I should be able to slide in and out without having to do undo the button. But I haven't decided what buttons I want to use yet. Oh my gosh, I'm almost done. Oh yeah. And I have to attach the sides. <laughs> Whoops. What do you think? He just wants food. I'm so pumped. I hope this turns out. Oh my gosh. And I have to serge all around the edges. Excuse you. are put together and they're all surged. For the arms, I've surged all around the hole and then for the outside one, because this one you're not gonna see because of the sleeve, I've just folded it under just a little bit and did a quarter of an inch stitch all the way around so it looks really clean. And for the collar, I have now finally attached the cape to the neck. So now it's time for the collar. I have my long piece of fabric I have pressed it in half just a little bit so I know exactly where the middle is. So I'm going to do right sides together matching up with the middle here. So once I reach the end, I'm only pinning it to see where I have to stop sewing. So this is the very end. So I'm just going to put a red pin and then do the same for the other side. Ow. And again, put a red pin where the end is. Now you take it off. <laughs> so find your right side, and then you're going to fold it in half, right side in the middle, and then stitch all around the edges right up until your red pin. So I'm gonna go do that to both sides now. This is the tie for ants. I guess when I made it before, I must have added more. <laughs> this is like a baby little tie. What the heck? Ugh. Well, I guess it is supposed to be all about the cape more. And I do have more fabric, so if I end up hating this, I can put on a new one. Hey, look at that. Whoa. Look at that. I couldn't even do it that nice if I tried. Still have the rest of the shirt to make. I was so focused on making that freaking cape and making sure it worked. And I didn't even think about the rest of the shirt and how much more work I have to do. So now I'm going to attach the collar. You're interrupting the magic. There was a puppy here before. Now I'll go stitch this. Collar's on. So I just have to flip this over, press everything down, and then hand stitch this all around on the outside. But I usually do that before bed, so I'm just gonna leave that until later. And now we're doing the cuffs. So I don't know what to do for the buttons for the cuffs. Some choices here. Only Farley's here, and he can't tell me what color these are. 
but I have these really cute vintage snaps and I think they're pink but honestly if they're not I don't know if I'd really care that much because they look pink to me so I think that's fine I actually have a whole tin of these that I got at a thrift store and they're all different colors there's even a white there's clear there's this I don't know purpley gray I don't know what color but I really think I like these ones and it does say on it that it is laundry proof so I'm assuming that the metal won't rust them Ugh. or I can just go with these pearl buttons I don't know what to do maybe I'll leave it for a surprise for the reveal so I think if I just stitch it all together at the same time, right through, it'll be fine. Because this fabric is so delicate that whenever I have to hand stitch the collar, at least there's something, there's like four, three pieces of material there, but this is going to be just so thin. So basically what I did for the cuff is I folded it in half with the right side in the middle and then I basically folded it in half on the outside again on both sides and then I've stitched all along both ends so it holds that shape. So for this one I've now flipped it inside out so you can see both sides are inside now and then the edges are clean. So I'm just gonna basically slide this right onto the end of the sleeve and then just do a normal stitch right through all of the fabric. Don't know if this is correct, but it's what I'm doing. We come from every quarter, from the north, south, east, and west. Oh, it's almost done. So I'm actually really okay with the way those cuffs went on and how they turned out. Uh, where is one of them? So that's the outside and the inside. Again, I don't know if that's the right way to do it, but it worked for me, so, and it was actually super easy, so <laughs> I feel like it was a shortcut. Ah, oh, Mr. Monkey Dog, you're distracting me. You're distracting me. I have to decide what button I'm putting on. I have to slip stitch all around the inside of the collar, but for now, I have to go and do the hem. So I'm gonna go serge all of this, and I'm just gonna flip it up. Again, do a really quick stitch all the way around. Give it a really good press, and then it's time for the reveal. Hello. Oh, can you tell me what color this is? I just love it so much. I'm so happy with it. I 
I'm also just shocked that I did it technically. Don't, I don't know, I have no words. I'm just, I'm, yeah, I'm impressed that I did it. I, I'm super happy I did it. I'm actually shocked I did it. Wow, all the same feelings at the start of the video, at the end of the video. But yeah, no, I'm just, I'm really happy. I, I think, you know, obviously one of the huge things that I love about it is the fabric, white, pink, green. That is just my like aesthetic. I just love it. While I was cutting, while I was piecing it together, I honestly paused a few times just to like stare at it because I love it so much. So I'm so happy I was able to put it into some kind of form that now I can wear and see it more often because I'm going to want to wear this all the time. But it's also one of those things that you can't wear all the time because it can be a little dressy or obviously people are going to just notice it and they're going to be like, why are you wearing that every day? And I just want to wear it every day. So I'm definitely going to be making more of these because it was... It wasn't actually hard. I think the longest thing was that I had to stop every step of the way to think about what the next step was and how to do it. Whereas when you're following a pattern, you know, you have your instructions there so you can just kind of read them and it still takes some time, obviously, but this was kind of me just sitting there being like, staring, being like, I don't know what to do next. And I didn't show it a lot, but I actually had to seam rip quite a bit not for anything big, just, you know, wanting to get the perfect placement of the shoulders or the perfect placement, you know, of the curve around the cape. So it, I really had to take my time doing all the steps, but I, you're supposed to, right? If you want something really nice, then you actually have to take the time to make it. Yes, there are some mistakes and I really don't even want to point them out because I'm so happy with this, but I usually do anyways. I think for the next time I would probably shorten the neck. And I even said at one point, so all this rest it doesn't seem like a lot because the back it's, you know, it could come in quite a bit. If I move my hair, um, I don't mind that it's kind of more open neck. It's a spring summer blouse. So this is actually, it feels like cooler. Um, but I think it would probably look better, you know, if it was actually properly placed the sleeves where they ended up here more. And you know what, even doing this, they end on the tip of my shoulder, so it's still proper, but I still think, you know, just a little bit more would make it kind of look nicer at the top. And then this would probably come up a little bit as well, so it wouldn't hang as low. I'm also happy that I did do the longer and curved cape part. I think the one, I haven't looked at the picture in so long, but I think it kind of, hers kind of comes just like down this way. It doesn't actually have the swoop. And I do really like this swoop kind of, it looks more capish, even though hers looked really capish. I'm not, I'm not sure. Maybe I'm just rem remembering it wrong, but I'm happy that I did it like this. I think I could have maybe made the blouse underneath a little bit more form fitting because I just did, you know, straight down. And I think if I would have just taken it in a little bit, I wanted a flowy blouse and I'm pretty sure the picture was a flowy blouse underneath as well. And I think it's because of the pattern, because there's so many flowers, so much going on that whenever, if I'm not wearing a high waisted skirt, it's just really busy and you lose the cape of it sort of thing because it's just kind of you know, all one note box sort of thing. Definitely something I would take into consideration. At the same time, I do like it a little bit baggier, especially at the back and around the front. So I always wear high-waisted skirts or something like that. So technically for this one, I, I'm okay that it's a little bit more baggy. I could go in and fix it, but I don't think I will because I don't mind the look of it. The other thing, I don't know how they did it or what happened, but with my sleeves, see the it's almost like on the wrong side. So I don't know what they did to make it, I think hers does end over here. So it must curl under, I'm, I'm not really sure. I guess I could just kind of move it that way and it still is fine. But I think I would have had to switch the snap onto the other side. But to be honest, having it this way feels more comfortable because it gives more kind of room to move. The other way it feels kind of constricting and you know, this part still flows regardless. So it's fine. <laughs> and I was kind of thinking, you know, at work when I'm writing, if I wear this, having, you know, the button right here always annoys me so much. So I kind of like it on the inside, just saying, not saying it's proper and I'm, maybe it does look kind of weird, but I don't really care. It's, it's fine for me and it still gives the shape that I wanted. So 
that's that. And I think the other thing that probably took the most time was, you know, pressing all of these seams. So almost everything had to be pressed super flat. And this fabric, I don't know what it is. I don't know if anyone can tell me what it is, but I found while pressing the edges, holy crap, the, the, they did not want to lay flat. So, and it's such fine fabric that you can't really put heat on it for that long. So that Taylor's clapper saved my butt. Oh my gosh, it is honestly amazing. So basically what a Taylor's clapper is, is when you're pressing, ironing something, and you can't leave the iron on it for a while in case it might burn or singe or anything like that, the heat stays between the wood and the material. So whenever you swap out the Taylor's clapper for the iron, it will still press it and hold that heat. Man, my lines are so smooth. I honestly don't know what I would have done without that because just the iron wasn't working. So I've left the link down below where I got mine. And yes, I'm just super happy that I have that in my sewing accessories kit now because it made it so much quicker. Oh my gosh, and I forgot to even mention at the very start, my fabric was $2.99. I don't know what the price was for that shirt, but I made mine for $2.99. Well, $2.99, you know, plus notions and my time but the fabric was $2.99 so you know what you can't beat that thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please give it a like and i hope you subscribe i will see everybody on monday for my next video i feel like my eyes are dead when i say that i hate saying that <laughs> seems super sus but <laughs> sound weird <clears throat> i don't think it was though barley are you impressed who did it yeah some acorns on you kid you know just uh hand stitching away sewed myself to my shirt